I want you to remind of this figure and the cycle. What is the cycle? It is of creation, destruction, and love, which we reviewed last week. Today, let's have a look at the major spiritual subjects of the first part of Genesis. I am helping you get a comprehensive grasp of the major stories. Let's begin with creation. In general, science agrees to the order of creation, but there are several arguments when it comes to the time span. Time is relative to our faith. To the Lord, a thousand years could just be a day, which is stated in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But considering the definition of day as stated in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and there was morning, the first day. It would be better to acknowledge a day as literally one day, because we can say that one evening will last a thousand years. God created the world in six days. Now the creation of the heavens and the earth is in contrast with the new heaven and earth in Revelation. From a spiritual point of view, several events in Genesis correspond to the ones in Revelation. The tree of life in the Eden to the tree of life in the New Jerusalem. Rivers run through Eden to a river run through the Jerusalem. The first marriage of Adam and Eve to the last marriage of the last Adam to the church. The beginning of the career of Satan to the end of Satan's career, the lake of fire. Death enters to death is destroyed. Man most privileges because of sin. To man re regains privileges because of Christ's payment for sin. Beginning of sorrow, pain, and death, to Christ wipes away all tears. The first murder, to no more death. The beginning of Babylon, to Babylon's destruction. Okay, hold this. And we will talk about detail in Revelation class. Let's first look at structures of the days of creation. I'm going to categorize the six days of creation into two parts. The first three days correspond to the last three days, respectively. The first day to the fourth day, the second day to the fifth, and the third to the sixth. All three days on the left, respectively, provide the facilities for the creatures on the right side. On the first day, God created the light, and on the first day, it bears the sun, moon, and stars. On the second day, God created the sea and sky for the birds and fish. On the third day, He created the dry land and vegetation for land animals and men. Here I have a question for you. Can you find three common phrases in the six days of creation? Each day includes the same phrase. Carefully read chapter 1. Right? Help me to get it. God said it was so. God saw it was good. There was evening and there was morning followed by the first day, or the second day, etc. When God says something and follows it by just the same, then it's done. It shows God is almighty or his power. Another important theme to help get through the Bible is that God saw something and it was good. What does good mean? Does it define beauty? We can't know the exact definition in this context, but we can presume that it was pleasing the Lord's eyes. He may feel happy 
when he looks over his creation, right? This defines the order of creation. In other words, the principle of creation. God is happy to see something that is good to him. How about you? How about this class? Is the Lord happy to see this class? Is this class good to him? This must be good for him to see, because you are all here to learn his word even on a Saturday while your friends go out. How good is it for him to see? Do you agree that he is happy to see you? What is this? This is the order of creation. Whatever you do, if God is happy to see it, it is the order of creation. I will be denoting this as the creation order or just the CO in short form. It is not carbon oxide, it is the order of creation. I am going to talk about one more point in relation to religious festivals, the Passover, the unleavened bread, the harvest, the ingathering and the Sabbath, and atonement. These feasts were predetermined by the Lord during His creation. Look at the first day, sign to mark seasons. The equivalent Hebrew word translates to a religious festival, as seen in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Verse 17 states that it is the shadow of Christ. Please remember this, it is the shadow of Christ. Religious festival, seasons, is the shadow of Christ. Keep this in mind. I will be going over this in detail in the class of Leviticus. After creating man, God gave him five responsibilities. B I F S R. This is the first creation from nothing and the order of creation. The first affair between man outside Eden was occurred by Cain and Abel. Let's see it. Adam had two sons, Cain and Abel, after he was banished from Eden. God took Abel's offering with a favor, but did not take Cain's offering. Cain was angry and was banished from God's presence. Then he built a city and named it after his son Enoch. The name Enoch means the first, and the city was the first of its kind built by man. From a spiritual point of view, this was against Eden. Its origin was humanism. Lamech, the fourth descendant of Cain, had two wives. Again, from a spiritual perspective, this was not good for the Lord to see. What does this signify? Destruction of the order of creation. Furthermore, he murdered and boasted to his wives. He claimed 77 times of vengeance for his death. But I can't be sure if it was God's command covenant or not, because there is no any information on this in the Bible. Lamech had three sons, and all three of them became the father of ungodly things, non-vegetarians, entertainers, and weapon makers. It is easy to understand that entertainment and weapons are ungodly things, but why is meat ungodly? Because God only allowed us to eat after the flood, Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. He only gave us vegetation on the third day of creation. This is the love of God. He restored the broken order of creation after Jabel broke the creation order by eating meat. 
God restored it by allowing Noah to eat meat. Why did he do this? Because he loves us. As I said on the first slide, this is a repeating cycle of God's dealings with man, creation, destruction, and love. If you read the Bible with this kind of understanding, you will earn grace and be able to taste the sweetness in your tongue. This is a way to get through the Bible. How to connect one event to another? Do you follow? Who is a Seth? Many people often miss a simple but very important detail on his birth. Do you know the story of his birth? He was born in the image of Adam and his likeness. This is a significant detail because it means that he was born in the likeness of God. On the contrary, Cain was born as a man-child as stated in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 of New American Standard Bible translation. In NIV and KJV, the Amen. That is why we can assume that Seth's descendants were the children of God, the son of God. Also notice his son, Enosh. Why does the chapter introduce him towards the end? It is because during his time, the people started calling on the Lord. From a spiritual point of view, there is an interesting story on Seth's descendants. Some of Seth's descendants have the same name as some of the Cain's descendants, Enoch and Lamech. Enoch was the fourth descendant of Seth. As you may well know, God took him into heaven while he was still alive. Was it the first time this happened? Yes, it was the first time a man ascended into heaven alive in human history. This is why his name is Enoch, which means the first. Enoch was also the name of the first city built by Cain. God restored Enoch and Lamech too when he became the father of Noah. The name Noah means comfort. Comfort for what? In the place of entertainers and weapon makers. This is the story of the order of creation and destruction and love. Now let's move on the flood. This overview tells us the spiritual message from the account of Cain and Abel. Spiritually, chapter 7 is a turning point on the subject of the first part of Genesis. It starts from creation to Noah's history. The history begins with the flood. Please take a look at the process of the flood in a snapshot entering the ark to the burnt offerings. Entering ark, flooding, resting on the mountain, receding of waters, burnt offering, covenant of a rainbow. The chapter 7 and 8 tell us many dates and durations, which may cause some confusion. Is the 40 days raining a part of 150 days flooding or not? For this, the Lord gave us exact days of the events, which are in red color. The calculated days by the durations are in blue color. Can you take a guess at how long the story lasts? How many days? A year and 10 days after the flood and 377 days after entering the ark, 40 days raining until March 27 and 150 days flooding. It means the flood has been for 110 days after rain had stopped it. Now, how many days the water has been receding after resting on the mountain? 220 days. This was much longer than the flood. 70 days more for the recovery. I have a question for you. 
How many couples of each animal were on board the ark? Two, one, no. Seven couples of clean animals, two couples of unclean animals, and seven couples of birds. Why is there a difference in the numbers of couples? Personally, I think that it was because of burnt offerings, since only clean animals were sacrificed for burnt offerings. This is the story about God's love and new beginning. What was the reason for the flood? It was because of the people's corruption, of whom? God's sons, and of course, son of men. Here, who are God's sons? This is about the passages that include the sons of the Lord. There are a total of 11 pa passages in the KJV, 6 in the NIV, 10 in the ASV, and again 11 in the ESV. Please ignore the remaining Korean translations. From summing up all these passages, you can already presume that they might be the sons of Seth. Of course, there still are various opinions from scholars. But if you look at Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 and chapter 5 verse 3, you will be assured. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 3, Seth was born in the image of Adam, and I was saying, Cain was born as a man in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. What was in, in the NASB translation? A man-child for the king. This is just for your reference. That's why, personally, I presume sons of the Lord is the descendant of Seth. Usually, most people Remember the covenant given to Abraham, but God made 12 covenants in the book of Genesis alone. How many people got God's covenant? Yes, six people. Who were they? The first was Adam, then Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, and then Jacob. It is interesting that Ishmael also had a covenant. He had a three and all three times were indirect, through his mother, Hagar, twice, and once through his father, Abraham. Can anyone guess who got the most number of covenants? Yes, Isaac. But as you may know, the story on him in Genesis is the shortest. His story only covers three chapters, while the rest have an average of ten chapters each. Why is this? Try and find the answer while you're reading those chapters. We will get to them next class. Please go over these covenants for a minute. Summing up, we can take the first passage of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. The remaining are based on the BIFSR. Be fruitful, increase in numbers, Fill the earth, subdue it, and rule over it. This is God's covenant as well as our duty. For this, what do we have to do? The answer lies in the spiritual message of this slide. It is that we have to be watchmen. A watchman for the house of Israel in Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Open it and check it. We must be the watchmen for India and God's kingdom. This is the message to us in this slide. 